Hi, welcome to Solcata Grove's lychee tour. We're going to be walking around the yard and looking at some of the different lychee trees that we have growing. And uh, you can see this is a really good time of year for it. This is the Mauritius lychee, which is probably our favorite flavor wise. It has a little bit more of a floral flavor than some of the other ones. Some people like it, some people don't. I don't like a lot of floral flavor. Um, Celeste really does though, so. Uh, but this is one of our favorites. This tree produced absolutely nothing last year um, because we had uh, we had, didn't have irrigation on. Actually, I did have irrigation on and I turned it off. Uh, it ended up defoliating the entire tree. It was much more dependent on it than I thought. So last year, this thing was just growing back out and it didn't fruit. And this year, it's making up for it with a tremendous crop. Uh, some of these are just now starting to get a little bit of red on them. Some of them are, we had a lot of rain just recently, so some of these are splitting. Not ready. Woo. Didn't think it would be. Um, but lychees are very easy to grow if your if your conditions are right. Um, they like it a little bit of chill in the winter, but not freezing. Um, and they like a lot of water in the spring. Once they start to bloom and set fruit, they like it pretty wet. One of the challenges with lychees is fertilization. Uh, they are very sensitive to any type of nitrogen that's not organic and they burn very easily. Um, we fertilize ours very little. If I'm going to give them anything, I'm going to use something like, um, uh, you can use organic things like, a, you know, a worm castings uh, or a, a compost tea type thing. Uh, you can use fish emulsion, works well. Uh, the algae type, uh, algae based fertilizers, those are fine. But if you start throwing stuff like, you know, 10, 10, 10 stuff on there, it's gonna, it's gonna uh, kill your trees. Uh, this is actually one of the first uh, lychees we put in. This is a Brewster. Brewster is, uh, has a reputation as only fruiting every other year. Uh, it's a commercial variety, but it's one that, um, ours fruit every year. Uh, I haven't seen that with ours, but um, your conditions may be different. Again, we got a lot of irrigation on this once it starts to uh, bloom. Uh, this damage is Sri Lankan weevil, and it's a little white beetle that loves to notch uh, the edges of fruit trees. And they get a lot of different things. I've, we've seen them on uh, avocado and mango and they love gosh, the ice cream a, a lot of other things too, Inga. But they particularly love lychees and longans. And, um, Ladybug is biting me. Ow. Why are you biting me? <laughs> what the heck? Me? Yeah, you're a ladybug. You're not supposed to do that. <laughs> um, but um, anyway, they don't they don't transmit diseases. They don't really do much more than cosmetic damage. But when you get a lot of them, they can actually do a lot of damage. So it, it makes your tree a little ugly. But um, um, but again, back to the Brewster. Brewster is a really good fruit. It's got a fairly large seed. But it's, um, but it's kind of a good, kind of your basic lychee. It's not particularly perfumey, but it uh, does have a good, a good flavor to it. So this is one of our other Brewsters. Uh, this one actually went into the ground the same time as the last one. Um, but this is one that during its first year, it had a really hard time and about two thirds of the tree died off and it was just with one little branch was left and I thought about digging it up and replacing it with it. Ah, we'll give it a try. And it did survive. And now it's fully filled out, but it is a lot smaller than the last one. But um, it produces every time that the big Brewster does and uh, just not quite as much yet, but a few more years and it'll catch up. All right, this is the very disappointing Ohia. Uh, someone has suggested it to us uh, five years ago, six yeah. years ago. Uh, we've had it in the ground this whole time. It grows beautifully. It's lush. It's got new growth coming on it all the time. And it has yet to produce a fruit for us. Um, it did bloom this year for the first time. And it had a little bit of bloom. I was just looking up here. I do see one piece of fruit left on it. Overall, incredibly disappointing. I don't know what the difference is. It's, it's had the same treatment as all of our other lychees. All of the other ones have produced fruit. This one just really hasn't. I don't know if it needs it. Um, it might need more chilling hours than some of the other ones or have some different uh, 
nutritional requirements. I'm not real sure, but uh, it's kind of a dud. And this was kind of its last year to produce or get top worked. So we'll see if I follow through with that. So this is the uh, Sweetheart variety of lychee, sometimes sold also as Heck Ip. Um, they're not actually the same. There is a different Heck Ip that's the, that's the black leaf lychee. Um, when they imported what they thought they were importing Heck Ip from China and they were actually bringing in this variety, this different Chinese variety, and they're very similar. They're both very good. Uh, and they both have a chicken, what's called a chicken tongue seed, meaning that the seed in there is not developed. And so instead of so much of the, of the fruit being taken up by seed, you get a lot more flesh in there when you have a chicken tongue seed in there. Um, this one has produced for us well in the past. This year it dropped almost all of the fruit that it set, uh, which other people have reported having that same issue with, uh, with Sweetheart as well. But it is a very, um, a very good fruit, and again, you get a lot of flesh with it because of the chicken tongue seed. So this is our sweet little pathetic Nomai Che lychee. Um, this, is a, this is a hard one to find. It's pretty rare, uh, but it's very, very slow growing. Uh, it's very hard to graft, and so it's why it's kind of rare, because most people don't bother with it. Uh, for some reason, the Sri Lankan weevils love this one more than anything else, and they just they beat it up, as you can tell. But we got fruit off of this last year, and it was phenomenal. It was like lychee candy. It was uh, intensely sweet, great flavor, and we only got a few of them on there. And they were small. I don't know if they're always small or they were small simply because our tree is, is too small to make bigger ones. Um, but it's, it's more of a, a, a project and an oddity and a conversation piece. Um, but it does produce absolutely the best lychees but you have to be very patient. This is the actual Hack Ip lychee or the black leaf lychee. Um, again, it's pretty uncommon simply because most people think they already have it because they, when they have sweetheart. Um, this one set a lot of fruit for us early and then dropped it all. So this is another one we're not gonna get any fruit off of this year, but um, I wouldn't say that it's better than a sweetheart. It's I kind of keep it more as a novelty again than just if uh, if this one disappeared and I had to replace it with another sweetheart, that would be fine. I think the sweetheart actually probably produces better uh, than the heck yep, but um, it is another one that has a, the chicken tongue seed and, a, and an excellent fruit to go with it. Um, this one's put on a lot of growth this year. It's going to take a lot of, uh, of uh, pruning uh, to get this one back into shape, but uh, it is another good one. So thanks for watching. That's been our lychee tour uh, for 2019. And we're looking forward to at least a few of our trees giving us a pretty good crop this year. And uh, the next best thing is uh, learning to keep the birds away because the birds will compete for all your lychees. So uh, thanks for watching.